For years, we've been investigating the health and safety of high school athletes and what we've uncovered could protect thousands of students across the country. Christian Hauser introduces us to a boy, a bill and a belief in safer sidelines and our latest athletes at risk. From day to day. This is the story of a bill inspired by the death of a Baltimore high school athlete, Elijah Gorham, a 17 year old who loved football. He could have been your neighbor, your classmate or even your son. At least two dozen high school athletes have died over the last two years. Two were right here in the tri-state. Those athletes have not had a bill in their name go before a legislature, let alone within five months of their death. This bill will really help us um, ensure that our school athletic organizations are in the best position possible to respond to sports-related injuries, including life-threatening injuries. The bill, proposed by Maryland State Representative Brooke Learman, will require schools to have defibrillators or AEDs. It would also require cold water immersion on site for all school-sponsored athletic practices and events. It will also require schools to have venue-specific emergency action plans and to practice them. Those are things Kentucky law already demands. Learman cited our coverage of that law and the wrongful death lawsuit for Matthew Mangine Jr. He collapsed in June of 2020 during soccer conditioning. The Mangine family lawsuit claims the school failed to follow Kentucky law. The Mangines have worked closely with Marty McNair, father of University of Maryland football player Jordan McNair, who collapsed in 2018. Over the past two to three years, high school student athletes have been impacted by heat-related illness and injury and cardiac arrest more than student athletes at all other levels of play. Who is calling 911? Who is getting the AED? The Maryland Athletic Trainers Association also spoke to the importance of what the bill would require. Every athlete in Maryland should have that access to an AED and the adults in place to implement the emergency action plan. It is, I think, very common sense. I was frankly pretty surprised that this doesn't already happen at all of our schools um, because this can really be the difference, you know, between a child living or dying. It's all in the hopes that bills are no longer named for athletes who died training or competing. For Local 12 News, I'm Christian Hauser. Three local high school athletes collapsed and died in the last two years. Their deaths have not caused any change in state legislation. We'll keep working to get answers for you. You can find all of our stories in this series at athletesatrisk.com.